My name is Ulf Smith and I'm the president of the European Association for the Study of Diabetes, an academic association of physicians and scientists. And I'm here together with Professor Edwin Gale, editor-in-chief of Diabetologia, as today we have some information for you regarding a possible safety concern relating to one of the newer insulins known as the insulin analogs. Worldwide, there are over 200 million people with diabetes. About 10% of these develop diabetes in early life, and most of them have what is known as type 1 diabetes. People with type 1 diabetes have an absolute reliance on insulin treatment for their continued health and well-being. Type 2 diabetes, which affects the remaining 90%, typically develops later in life and may be associated with excess body weight. People with type 2 diabetes are still able to make their own insulin, which means that they can usually be treated with diet and tablets in its early stages. At a later stage, however, many patients gradually lose the ability to produce their own insulin and will also come to need insulin injections to maintain their health. Insulin is essential for the health and well-being of millions of people. The discovery of insulin was one of the great medical breakthroughs of the 20th century. Insulin has been used by millions of people for nearly 90 years and it has an excellent safety record if used correctly. The insulin manufacturers have worked hard over many years to produce insulins which can give better and more predictable control and a number of valuable improvements have been made. More recently, a manufacturer has modified the human insulin molecule itself to produce the latest types of insulin which are known as the insulin analogs. Some of these have been modified to give a very rapid onset of action and others have been designed to give slow and sustained release. The new information we will be talking about today relates to a long-acting analog known as insulin glargine or Lantus insulin. My name is Edwin Gale and I'm the editor-in-chief of Diabetologia, which is the journal of the European Association for the Study of Diabetes. The reports we're about to tell you about have all just been published in the journal. Lantus insulin was introduced within the past 10 years and it's proved very popular with many doctors and patients. It's most widely valued in type 1 diabetes. Uh, there is still some debate as to its benefit in type 2 diabetes. Initial safety concerns were expressed some years ago because it's been shown to cause some types of cells, including cancer cells, to grow and divide more rapidly in cell culture conditions in the laboratory. Other studies proved negative, however, so the significance of these laboratory observations has remained in doubt. Last year, however, a research paper was submitted to our journal describing the analysis of more than 100,000 insulin-treated patients in Germany. 20,000 of these were treated with Lantus insulin only and almost all of them had type 2 diabetes. The investigators initially found no overall increase in the number of cancers in people taking glargine, but the picture changed when they adjusted the analysis to allow for the amount of insulin taken. It then emerged that on a dose-for-dose -dose basis, people on glargine were more likely to be diagnosed with cancer in a given year. To give some idea of the scale of this effect, we're talking of a difference that might affect one person in a hundred in a given year. It's important to emphasise that this is a very simple summary of a very complex analysis which relies on statistical modelling techniques. It's notorious that these can sometimes provide misleading results. This paper was in fact sent to six leading experts for comment and three of these initially recommended rejection. Many of their concerns were actually ironed out in the course of revision, but not all of their objections could be answered. Just to take one example, it was not possible to break the analysis down according to type of cancer. We therefore concluded that it could be misleading to publish these results in isolation. The authors of the German paper 
were therefore invited to wait while other European groups attempted to confirm their findings in other countries. The authors agreed to these conditions. So, in the event, three further studies have now been performed by diabetes and cancer specialists in other countries with access to large patient databases. All four papers have now been published online. The first of these papers came from Sweden and was produced by matching national databases for cancer and diabetes. This analysis included more than 100,000 insulin-treated patients, 6,000 of whom were on Lantus insulin only. Briefly, this study found no increase in cancer risk in patients who took Lantus insulin together with other types of fast-acting insulin. As a group, these patients were younger and were more likely to have type 1 diabetes. Analysis of those on Lantus alone, however, most of whom had type 2 diabetes, showed a twofold increase in breast cancer, but no difference in any other type of cancer. This finding was considered robust in that it was unaffected by any one of a number of statistical corrections. Although the Swedish experience took the story a bit further, the investigators have been very careful to point out that their findings are far from conclusive. In particular, there is a concern that patients treated with Lantus alone are different in a number of other respects from patients treated with other insulin regimens. As a group, they are, for example, typically older than patients and other types of insulin treatment. Statistical analysis always works best when like is compared with like. When two very different groups are compared, there is always a risk that any differences between the two groups have arisen because they are different types of people rather than because they are different types of treatment. And here the story is taken up by investigators in Scotland. As in Sweden, these were able to match findings from a national diabetes database with the National Cancer Registry. Briefly, and once again, their findings were very largely consistent with the Swedish findings. In this case, however, it was even more evident that Lantus users fell into two fairly distinct groups. That is to say, those who took Lantus with other insulins, and most of these were young and had type 1 diabetes, as compared with those who were on Lantus alone, who were older and had type 2 diabetes. The first group actually had a lower than average cancer risk, as compared with human insulin, whereas the group on Lantus alone had a slightly higher risk. Many of these differences, however, disappeared when appropriate statistical corrections were made. The finding of particular note, however, was that there was once again an excess of breast cancers in the women treated with Lantus alone, and of about the same magnitude as that seen in the Swedish study. It's obviously a matter of considerable concern that the same finding emerged from two separate studies.